So this is pretty much the worst beginning to a relationship with Sony I could have had. So yeah, I'm about to email them now about it and um, see what they say. But yeah, this is a new low for me. So <laughs> we'll see where, where, where I go from here. All right, if you're watching this, it's probably because you came from a video that I released simultaneously where I recommend a specific camera for sports videographers on a budget. But if it's not the case and you haven't seen that video yet, stop watching this and go watch this one first. Otherwise, it's story time. Like I mentioned in my other video, I've been doing sports videography tutorials on this channel for about two and a half years now, and there's a few things that I'm proud of. I'm proud of being the first YouTuber to do sports videography content and to see a lot more people doing it now. I'm also extremely proud of the sports videography community that I started on Facebook a year and a half ago, which now has over 2000 members and is one of, if not the best Facebook group that I'm a part of because of how everybody contributes in many different ways. But more recently, I'm proud of the fact that my channel has now reached a point where big videography brands are now taking me seriously when I approach them about potential collaborations and brand deals and things of that nature. Well, they did until now. You see, when I got the idea of making a video about the best camera for sports videographers on a budget and decided to recommend the Sony A6400, I reached out to Sony because I don't have an A6400 and it would make a lot more sense for me to use one in the video. And straight away, they were on board. They asked me what I needed and sent me pretty much everything I asked for. So from that point on, I made it my mission to make that video the best camera review video from a sports videography perspective ever produced. Not that there's that many of them, but I really wanted that video to be perfect so that Sony would keep sending me stuff for other projects and also because I wanted that video to answer all the questions of the people who reach out to me I would say on a weekly basis asking me which camera should they buy for sports videography. So I planned multiple shoots over the two week period that I would have the camera with me and it wasn't easy because I didn't want to just shoot professional sports. I wanted to cover lower levels as well so that it would be more representative of what my audience would be filming. So I had to reach out to basketball leagues I've never worked with before and I had to quickly organize media accreditations. And also in Australia, if you're working with or around minors, you have to get a working with children permit. So I had to get one of those. Basically, it was a hell of a week of planning, which was very stressful because everything was last minute and some of the accreditations were much slower to come through than the others. But ultimately, on the Friday night before my first weekend of multiple shoots, I was all ready to go. All that was left to do was to pack my gear, and then this happened. All right, so I know I don't typically film this type of behind the scene content, but um, this is just so crazy that I just thought like I, at this point I need to film it because this is beyond ridiculous. Um, I've been doing a few tests all week. I've got the I had the camera for for I don't know five six days at this point, and everything was going fine. So now it's probably six now. I'm I'm putting my gear together, my kit to make sure I'm good to go for tomorrow, and I make the most of it. And I decided to format my SD card so I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. And as I try to get the card out of the camera, for some reason it won't come out. And I've done this multiple times throughout the week. So I'm like, it's never been this difficult to get the card out. Like what, what the hell's going on? And I'm, I'm, you know, trying to get it out without breaking anything, obviously. So I'm being cautious, but at the same time, it's getting pretty obvious at some point that I'm going to have to apply a bit of a, a bit of force. And, um, and anyway, long story short, I squeezed it out in a way that I thought was pretty smooth and, and didn't, you know, nothing cracked, nothing moved, nothing broke. So I thought I was safe. But since then, every time I try to put an SD card in, um, it works. I can put an SD card and take it out. Nothing gets stuck. It's, it's a lot easier. It is what it used to be, basically. But every single time, 
I get this message. So this is pretty much the worst beginning to a relationship with Sony I could have had. So yeah, I'm about to email them now about it and um, see what they say. But yeah, this is a new low for me. So <laughs> we'll see where, where, where I go from here. So at that point, to say that I was devastated would be an understatement. Not only did I have to get in touch with Sony to let them know what had happened to the camera and potentially ruin my relationship with them forever, but I also had to call all the people that I'd been harassing all week about accreditations for the weekend to let them know that I wasn't coming after all. So after feeling bad for myself for a little while, I emailed Sony telling them exactly what happened and I also decided to go shoot all the games I was planning to shoot but using my camera instead. Which turned out to be the greatest thing I could have ever done. Because it became clear to me from the start that the fact that I hadn't filmed any basketball in over a year at that point made me extremely rusty. And it took me a couple games of practice just to get my rhythm on point and find the right camera positions. And on the Monday, Sony got back to me and they didn't even flinch. They sent someone to pick up the camera and also sent me a replacement straight away. To be honest, I still don't think I made the greatest of first impressions, but at least I didn't try to lie my way out of this by saying that the camera was already broken or something like that. I told them exactly what had happened and I like to think that they appreciated that. So in the end, I think this very stressful event was a good thing because if the Sony camera hadn't broken, the footage that I would have filmed with it that weekend for my review video would have been garbage. So the incident allowed me to push all my Sony shoots by one week and use that first weekend for some much needed practice. So the moral of this story is practice makes perfect. Sony are apparently very easy to work with and Always be careful when sliding an SD card in your camera, even if you've done it a million times before. If you want to know the other big mistakes I've done throughout my sports videography career, just watch the video on the left side of your screen right now. Otherwise, go check out my Sony A6400 camera review if you haven't already. And as usual, thank you for watching. My name is E, and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.